in general, we see mutations in the SARS-CoV-2 virus between five and 10 times per week. The vast majority of those mutations are not favorable to the virus and it's selected out. If our body has learned how to recognize spike protein through vaccine, but now this spike protein is different, the immunity that you got from your vaccine isn't going to be as good as it would be for a virus that wasn't a mutant. When we look at this epidemiologically, we talk about the R0 of if one person's infected, how many people would be infected? So right now they think for SARS-CoV-2, for every one person who's infected, you infect two to two and a half people. It could be with these mutations or the mutants, it could be the R0 could go to three or four people. So it could make it so that it infects more people, therefore facilitating spread. The more people that get infected, the more that the virus replicates, the more we will see mutations that occur. One of the things that really makes the SARS-CoV-2 virus susceptible to change is the fact that it belongs to a group of viruses known as mRNA viruses. So its genetic material is in RNA. If you compare that to a virus like um, the chickenpox virus or um, the zoster virus, uh, that's a DNA virus. And because that virus uses two strands of nucleic acid instead of one, that makes that much more stable. So it doesn't change as frequently. So in the respiratory viruses, particularly as Dr. Graham mentioned, the SARS-CoV-2 virus and the influenza virus, because these viruses are RNA-based viruses, they only have to change one strand of nucleic acid. And that makes it much easier to acquire mutations in the virus. And it's why we tend to see them with a higher degree of frequency than we see changes, say, in a virus like the chickenpox virus. Thank you.